Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Chilly, but it's that nice kind of crisp chill. I don't mind it so much. Picking up from where things left off last week, which is a kind of a to be, not kind of, it was a to be continued situation. Just wouldn't stop raining. It was dark out and like the lights out here and things don't work. So the palm trees got picked up and I just couldn't go into a lot of details without light because couldn't see what was going on. So the Alexander palm that was right there, it's gone. And then as I'm sure you probably saw part of it in the shot just a moment ago. Wow, he's just having the time of his life today. Are you going swimming? Anyways, uh, don't go in there. You know better out. Yeah, he's learning. Washingtonia, still here. They couldn't take it, so here's what happened. Last week, it was just rain, 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 and it wasn't safe to bring the crane out. They have to use a crane to move a plant this big in and out. So uh, that's just been rescheduled-ish. I'm waiting to hear back from them. We will see, uh, regardless, I'd like for it to be out of the ground or at the very least to try and protect it in some way, shape or form. I don't know, still have some time to have to worry about that. And he is bouncing off the walls. I've been like holding my tripod with both hands because every time he goes flying through, he about knocks it over and that sort of defeats the purpose of the tripod if I have to hold on to it. I suppose it's okay. Yes, the pool's dirty. It's that time of year, leaves are falling in and I haven't, well, I haven't been cleaning it, so. There it is. The water's clean. Lots of leaves, a little bit of algae, not that big of a deal. Um, excuse you, <laughs> what was that? Right in front of me, just gonna start chewing on roses? And just like that, he's gone. That was fast. So that's what's going on there with the Washingtonia. I need to go ahead and get these impatience cut out of here. I'm wondering if maybe I should go ahead and give Turbo a few more minutes to run around and get some energy out. I don't, where did he go? He still hasn't returned. Well, he's out there somewhere. Nervous to walk away from the tripod. I feel like he's gonna go flying past it and knock it over. Freaking out. The neighbors mowing their lawn. She's heard happen thousands and thousands of times. Well, that's that's an exaggeration. Plenty of occasions. I don't know why it's freaking them out now. Got my tarp out here so that I can just take these clippings and toss them right on here. It should go very quickly. I was gonna use my clippers, but these are pulling up just fine and I wanna top dress this anyways. So this will just help get some little holes in there and make it easier to work the ground. Yeah, those are ripping up very easily. Of all the places to stand, you gotta, gotta stand right on the tarp, huh, Toby? All right, Toby. Love having a tarp to toss things on, makes everything go so much more quickly and smoothly. Oh, the last clump that still has some flowers on it. Well, it was nice seeing them. It is necessary. I mean, it's been long enough. The patients are starting to look kind of sad. They weren't doing so great anymore. There it is. Oh, no, you know, I'm actually, I'm not that sad about it. I'm kind of happy to be wiping that slate clean. One thing that's exciting here that is encouraging. Do you see that? See that plant right there? This is the begonia, that turbo ripped out of the ground a couple months ago. Saved a few pieces of it and I stuck it back down in there to see if it would take root and it didn't. <laughs> oh, well, a tiny little piece did take root. I, it, he ripped it back up, but this is all new. Isn't that nice? Got some new growth there. I'm gonna put a wire bell on top of that before he destroys it again. There we go. A little bit of protection, save the plant from the puppy or potentially I'm just putting something here that's going to draw the puppy's attention to the spot, I'm not really sure. I need to find some landscape staples because I think that that would help an awful lot with pinning this bell down. Now oh, it just seems like the smart thing to do, but I don't know. Trial and error here. Okay, so now I'm going to go dispose of these impatiens and bring some plants over here that I want to get into the ground and start planting some stuff up. I just realized I never introed the video. I just picked up and was like, hey, here's, what I didn't get to talk about last week and then just started doing things. Probably figured out by now that I was just trying to get the impatience out of here so I can go ahead and get some perennials in the ground. I have a whole bunch of perennials here. I've been waiting to plug into this spot for a while now, but I mean, you saw why I couldn't because 
I filled the space with impatience, which I should maybe still be able to do next year. I don't know. We will see. They'll have to go further back. And one of the plants that I want to put in the ground right now needs to go right where that crepe myrtle is. And I don't want to dig that up this time of year because well, it'll just die. So probably shouldn't do that. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of thinking here. The idea that I had with this entire spot was to have a backdrop of the deciduous, sh deciduous, decidu what ha what's happening to my mouth? Zingiber myogas. Got a whole bunch of these from Plant Delights, I don't know, a month or so ago. And they were in a little plant hall. A nice pretty texture that will like kind of come forward. I don't know how to describe it. It'll be like, like this. They'll come out towards everything. And then I have these Ruby Spice Clethras. And I was going to put one right here. And then I wanted to try one down in the shade at the end over here, because they can go sun or shade. And I just wanted to see the contrast there. Wow. I could talk about it and talk about it. Instead, I think it'd be better just to do a what's probably gonna be a very anticlimactic before and after. Yeah, no, this is not exciting enough for a before and after. We can talk while I do this. I've decided to alternate the Zingiber Myogo white feather with these silver arrows. So it started with a white feather down there. It has a more heavy, well, the white feather at the very end, right above that lava stone, has a more white variegation on it. It's going to take them time for that to show, probably not until next year. And then a silver arrow, which I have another one Right here, no, this is a white feather. Here's a little immature leaf of that white feather. Isn't that pretty? It's like a painting. As that matures, it's going to become much, much, much more white. That's got a nice big growth coming out of it too. Some healthy roots. That's good. That's what I like to see. These gingers have done well for me here in zone six. They're good to zone six. It's what they're rated as. Anytime you're working with a plant that's marginally hardy, it's normally a better idea to get those in the ground early in the growing season and not, you know, what is it? Maybe a couple weeks until we have some frost here. But these have a better chance of survival in the ground with mulch on top of them than they do if I were to keep them in their containers throughout the winter time. The so whole point there is that I'm putting these in the ground for their winter survivability. I don't necessarily plan on keeping it like this. I mean, I think maybe I will. We'll just have to wait and see. There were a couple other spots where I wanted to put these, but I could always order some more. You may notice I haven't been loosening the root balls. I only do that if something is like actually wrapped up and looks really bound. I figure since these aren't actually going to have time to put out new roots, they may put out a little bit because the ground's still plenty warm, even though it's like 50 degrees outside. The ground's still in the 70s. And being careful to not loosen those up roots up too terribly much. I didn't space them exactly how I probably should have. They probably should have been spaced about two feet apart. I went 18 inches. That's because I think I mentioned, I'm not positive that I'm going to keep these here. I know I wanted the white feathers over here, the silver arrows, I kind of wanted in a different spot. And I think that alternating variegation with different patterns might look a little weird. I don't know, like this is mostly for winter survival. So having it like this, the white feathers are about, well, three feet apart. So they're spaced just fine. And then if I decide to pull those silver arrows up in the spring and move them to the other spot where I was hoping to put them, then, well, that's what I'll do. That, what was my point there? Well, that is, they'll have that space if I pull the silver arrows up next spring or late spring when they break dormancy, move those to the spot I wanted to have them in, then they'll be able to fill in that gap. But by having them 18 inches apart, that will fill in much more quickly. The thing with the Zingibers, they, at least the variegated ones, these white feathers and the silver arrow, they will take a few years to fill that in. And that's just how things go with perennials. They take some time. Next year, probably won't see much out of them. And then the year after, see a little bit more than the third year, just boom. Hopefully lots of growth of really fun, exotic looking foliage that will just kind of move in the wind and add some nice textures, tropical-esque, you could say. I'm excited about it. Okay, one left. One very, very special little plant left. No, oh, there are actually a few left. I forgot about the clethras. So with roots like these, it's not, root bound, but it's heading in that vicinity. That's why I just go through, just give it a little tickle on all the sides. That's it. Generally easier to manage with plants that have fine roots. Well, sort of, I guess that's a double-edged sword, right? Because if they have big roots, it's easier to see what you're doing to entangle them, but with fine roots tend to tear them up. Okay, now I'm all done. Got the Ruby Spice Clethra right here. And that spot, I figured I'd put it right next to that crepe myrtle. And then in the spring when I lift the crepe myrtle, I can just scoot it over because there'll be a big hole right next to it. 
It's the same thing with the gingers. I just figure it's winter survivability. It's going to be better in the ground than in the pot. The ground should be warmer and less exposed. And then I put the other one right over here. I know that that probably looks like it's too close to the laurels, but these laurels, hopefully next year, maybe the year after, it's gonna be time to start hedging them. So this spot will have a clean break on it. I wanted to bring it forward just a smidge, but I need to expand on this pathway here. It started to get filled in. Over time, you just kind of have to dig and lift and scoot things around. So next year, I need to get in here with some more stones and redefine that spot. Because as it is right now, the dogs just kind of go straight through here. So thinking forward to having a path that comes out in kind of like a V-shape in here out into the lawn, I think that's about where I'd want to put it. These ruby spice clethers, they don't, I mean, they can get big, but it takes them a long time. They grow like snails and they can be pruned. So I'm not concerned about its placement there. I think that that is just fine. I like having fragrant plants wherever there's walkways. So that's one of the reasons I wanted that there. As this grows and gets maybe a foot or two higher, I will probably clean out from down below it so that I can have more ground cover down below it. And that'll help define that spot some more. Yes, there's a dead shrub back there. It happens. It was very hot. It was a clearance plant. It was it was already on the struggle bus when I put it in the ground. OK, and the last plant. Do you recognize that one? And get in just a smidge closer. So this is the hosta that I got from Plant Delights along with all those gingers. This is where I had wanted that plant. It's a little bit close to the walkway, which has me just like a smidge nervous. But I do think that once I redefine that pathway, then it will be <laughs> more protected. This one doesn't get very big. I think it's like eight to 12 inches high and wide at the most, so it will fill in this spot right here and have that nice lava rock behind it. Uh, this hosta doesn't get all that big. Oh, and I know if you hadn't seen that video and you don't know what I'm talking about, that hall where I picked up this hosta. Okay, I'll pull this off so we have a better look. It got shipped out in a huge, crazy heat wave moved through, so it, it showed up looking kind of rough. It's put on some growth and it actually even has, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, Maybe. I don't know if you'll be able to make that out. There's a little leaf coming up from right there, right above my finger, and that's an offshoot, which is really exciting because they describe this particular hosta as being one that doesn't offshoot all that often, so hence the price. Oh no, did I get, did I get scammed? <laughs> I don't think so. This will look a lot better next year when all that nasty foliage is off there and it has fresh growth on it. I wanted that low hosta with that really pretty variegation, front and center with that pretty rock with the moss on it behind it the perennial begonia that will come up and have pretty pink flowers that cascade right above it with the backdrop of these gingers. That's gonna look so pretty. And the bells to protect from the puppy. And he is full of it today. It's funny timing because I had just been talking about how amazing he's been. Like in the house, he's like almost normal dog. Still have to keep an eye on him because he's a puppy and he's still very curious, picks things up, wants to chew on them, but don't have to worry about him as much in the house. And he's been pretty good outside, but today I came out with the camera and he was just like, Holy crap, time to go crazy. Cognato 2.0. I was short one wire bell, so hopefully <laughs> that ginger right there won't get pulled up. I think it'll be okay. So the plan here, normal garden stuff. Once the frost comes through and starts to nip these things back, I'll go ahead and give them a cut right above the ground and put some mulch on top of them. By some mulch, I should be more specific. Because these are small, I guess you could say tender plants. I don't know if I would consider these tender. They're rated for zone six. I'm in zone six. They're fresh. That's what I should say. They haven't put those roots out. They haven't done anything to establish themselves. So I will be very, very, very generous with the mulch that goes on top of these. I'll probably make sure there's at least six inches of mulch on top of each clump. I mean, I'll probably just take the mulch and do a heavy layer all the way through here. I have to taper it up so I don't want to clog the drainage down here. That should keep them all happy until springtime. Yes, things are still messy. I got excited. I just wanted to start planting. I didn't feel like dealing with all the, you know, all the blech. And I don't mind leaving some scraps around when I pull up impatience and other annuals. As long as I remember to go through and cut them up into smaller pieces, then they can break down better. A little bit of that's not bad for the soil, as long as it's not too much, because then it can become waterlogged and can create other problems. Oh, and I did pull up the caladiums. These are the lemon blush caladiums that were behind everything there. I, typically, with the caladiums, it's usually better to go ahead and let them start to die back and go into a dormancy on their own, but they they don't seem interested. We are late October and those were still going strong. But again, the ground's warm. There's warm pavement here. It, I mean, you can, I don't know. The plants haven't gotten the message yet that it's fall. It should be all right. I'm not too worried about him. Hey, Toby. People were worried about you, Toby. He wasn't in last week's vlog and there were a few people who were quite concerned. He's fine. Toby's good. He's just an old man now. He likes to sleep 
hang out in the house more than he does come outside, especially when it's really icky. That weather last week, it wasn't very pleasant. He's such a good boy, Toby. I love you, Toby. So with the caladiums, I'll still go ahead and just leave them out and I'll let them start to die back on their own and then I'll cut the foliage off of them, make sure that the soil's mostly shaken off of those roots and then I'll put them someplace cool, dark and dry to store for the winter time. Does it look sad over here without the Alexander palm? I actually think it still looks pretty great with the bananas and the gingers and the, what are they called, cannas that are back there? That was a lot of this going on, sorry about that. Hey, what's going on? Uh, why'd you turn off? And you're turning back on, okay, ghost. No, so water level's low for some odd reason. I'm not sure why I have to figure that out when I'm done filming this video. See, there's some storm damage and some of that damage is probably from when they pulled the palm out. They had to get in with a really big hand truck. It's called a tree cart, great big contraption with wheels on it they got down and had to like dig it out and move it out. I didn't film the process just because it was raining. The poor guys, like they had been rushed through the day, sopping wet all day long. I wanted them to just be able to get in and out of here as fast as they could. I was feeling bad for them. The weather that day was just disgusting and they were outside working and, it, and it's kind of awkward having cameras on people. So, but y'all saw when I had them delivered with the crane and everything, it's just like that, but in reverse. And this time without a crane. I was really impressed with how well they were able to get that gigantic palm out of here. They moved that thing out so easily and seamlessly. Oh, that was fun. That's all I actually had planned for right now. I have a bunch of other things going on that y'all will hopefully find out about in a week or so. That's the plan anyways, you know how plans go. So that's why the vlog's shorter and not just like bouncing around from day to day doing different things. But I am so happy that this is finally done. I loved seeing the impatience here. I really wanted to get those perennials in the ground. We still have, for the 10 day forecast, they're not showing any frost. So it looks like we're gonna make it into November, which is a big step up from last year and the year before where I had to move the plants in late October into November over there into the garage. I wasn't thrilled about that. That's not normal for here. Normally we have frost by October 15th, but it's just like a light frost. Like maybe it'll be a two or three day cool span that goes through and it's not usually too bad. And then uh, I'm normally good to have the plants out here until about two to three weeks into November, but it hasn't been that way for the last four or five years. I don't know if that's a new trend or what's going on, but everything is doing well. And I think that they're ready to go inside for the most part. So whenever that cold snap comes through, just start pruning and moving and spraying and scooting. It's actually a lot of fun. I kind of enjoy it because it's such a big before and after between just like, oh, messy garage to messy garage full of plants. <laughs> I keep meaning to mention, I think I started off saying earlier, I will still be able to do the impatience in the front here since these gingers will come up and over everything. I can still do a row of them. It won't be as large and grandiose unless I move it down here into the drainage, which I could do. I really shouldn't, but I could. And you don't always have to have a wall of plants, right? Could always just do a patch there, a patch there, and a patch there. That would still look absolutely lovely. Remember the original plan with this spot, pardon the voice crack, adult puberty, it's happening. Of the pedicets that were over here, the big leaf plants that are now died back and destroyed by the puppies. Those variegated ones were going to get moved over here. And then I, didn't. <laughs> it was with the puppy coming and then it, all the stuff that was going on this spring with my butt. It's, it was just a thing. I just didn't get around to it and I was really pleased with just having the impatience here instead. Now that I've seen what that looked like here with those impatients, oh, I, don't, I don't know why I'd put anything else here. There's just some nice perennials in the background and then just a row of color in the front. Yeah, I'm good with that. Keeping it simple and the pedicets, they're good over there. What you looking at, Toby? What are you looking at? Is Turbo up there? He's not supposed to be up there. Turbo! Come on, baby. Come here. Come on. Okay, good boy. <laughs> it's very enthusiastic. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. I wanted to do some projects and activities over here, but there's a power washer going, a leaf blower going, and a lawnmower going in the neighbor's yard. And that's not going to stop anytime soon. And I'm still fighting the storms and the clouds. So not complaining though. We've needed the rain. we have been getting plenty of it. The air is so fresh and so clean. I'm loving it. There's an odd echo going on over here. All right, thanks for hanging out. That was fun, getting some stuff planted. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.